We have the set 6.5 patch notes for Teamfight Tactics, also known as patch 12.4. And we're gonna be going over every single change that's been going on. We're gonna be going over questions such as how your rank resets. And I'll give you my thoughts along the way on all of these changes. So starting off, we have the Little Legends. We have the new Abyssia. This one's actually pretty decent. We also got a new Wolf guy. It looks like he's just straight out of a furry convention. And then after that, we have um one of the new cats i actually don't recognize this little legend but scrolling down we have the new horse and oh this one's kind of neat and then after that we have the gizmos and gadgets pass so we get a couple new maps this one's kind of got like a chemtech theme and scrolling down i kind of like this new river sprite um, definitely is a lot decked out than before. Um, this one's a little too cutesy for me, but you know, everyone's got different tastes, everyone's got different uh, flavors, so whatever floats your boat, get the little legend that you want. More importantly, back to the rank changes. Grandmaster and Challenger rank are available. You need to get 200 LP to reach Grandmaster and 500 LP to reach Challenger because all our ranks are going to be soft reset. A soft reset means you go down like one tier from your current standings, uh, so it's pretty straightforward there. And if you're a master or above, you'll be reset to diamond four. One thing to note is that like the first games you play are super important. You gain something ridiculous like 200 LP if you win, don't quote me on that. And you also don't lose anything when you lose. So these are pretty important if you wanna like skip a few ranks right at the get go. But yeah, essentially like if you get gold or higher, you get a new emote based on whatever rank you were. And yeah, it's cool stuff if that's what you are into. So Double Up and Hyper Roll also got reset. And you got these emotes if you earned a particular rank for that one. Um, but going on into the actual game changes. So user experience changes. This one's pretty important. They finally added a matchup tracker in the client. So before, if you wanted to do matchup tracking, you had to download an overlay. These overlays are often filled with like a ton of ads and stuff. So they're really annoying to use. So I'm really glad that they are adding this so we don't have to keep using those like garbage overlays in my opinion. Also, if you're playing on mobile, you had a disadvantage because you can't use those add-ons on mobile unless like you're like some high tech guru or something like that. But um, essentially like, yeah, this is a w welcome change. I wish they just changed the matchmaking algorithm as well because I feel like the current one, uh, everyone's too used to it now. So it's not really like that random because everyone knows what's going on. Um, but yeah, essentially the opponent you have yet to fight during your current stage will have an icon by their tactician in the UI indicating that they may be your next opponent. Next up we have augmented match history. So match history will now show augments. Um, so two things from my wish list came true already. These are the very first two changes that we're seeing in the actual game. But essentially like these were two things that I really wanted in the game and now they are there. Next up we have the mid set augment changes. So They've retired some augments that coordinated with traits they removed, such as Academy and Imperial. And then they also added like over 80 new ones. There actually are like a ton of them and they're all pretty different. Gone are the days where we use Celestial Blessing or Thrill to Hunt every single game because yeah, there are a ton of new ones here and we're probably gonna take a look at them in just a second. So first off, we have the large changes, uh, large like the size of these patch notes let's get into the augments so chemtech overload max health percent explosion damage uh, they removed the third tier of it which is pretty important because that one felt kind of weak so no more prismatic chemtech overload runic shield one now also grants a swain runic shield two grants a vex and runic shield three has been removed so essentially for all the augments that are trait related but aren't actually giving you like a plus one Arcanist, for example, they also give you like one of the champions now, which is very welcome. It makes you more incentivized to go for them. Ardent Sensor bonus attack speed got decreased a little bit and it also grants a Lulu now. Cutthroat Mana Reeve got nerfed, but they also get a Talon. Duet Health bonus reduced, but you get a Senna. Senna's one of the new Socialite units. On Guard Disarm Duration got nerfed, but you get a Warwick now. Lifelong Learning gets you a Syndra. And also Lifelong Learning no longer works on PvE rounds. Pretty important addition there. One for All now also grants an Ash. They are moving One for All, I believe, to the Syndicate trait. Portable Forge option, Obsidian Cleaver, Magic, and Armor Shred is reduced a bit. Pirates now get you a Quinn. Self-Repair time is now being increased from 6 to 7 seconds, and it also gets you a Zillion. Shrug It Off, which is the Brawler one, gets you a Sejuani. And Sniper Heart now grants you an Ash instead of a Tristana. So essentially, all the trait-related augments, you get a champion now, but they nerfed the actual trait a little bit. 
Uh, so small gives you a Corky. Stand behind me gets you a Blitzcrank. Twin Shot Heart grants you a Corky instead of a Kog'Maw. Unstable Evolution. Fix a bug where three star champs with items were getting more stacks than intended. Unstable Evolution now also gets you a Rek'Sai. Great for getting two stars, um, ironically. So it makes use of the trait like doubly for this one. Armor Plating now procs one time at 50% health, giving three seconds of invulnerability. And you also get a Cho'Gath. Broken Stopwatch gets you a Zillion, and it will also never appear on 1-4, which is very welcome because this one's pretty useless unless you have a lot of clockwork units in the game. Clear Mind only appears on 1-4, good. Gold Reserves uh, nerfed a little bit but gets you a Quinn. Instant Injection gets you a Warwick. Junkyard, which is the scrap one, gets you an Ebzreal. Scholar Crest now grants a Zyra instead of a Heimerdinger. And then Sharpshooter Damage Reduction, 45-50%. to 50%. Uh, sharpshooters also get a corky now i believe that one was the one that makes your sniper shots bounce smoke bomb now also gets you a talon that was an assassin one and then spellblade ability power scaling on next basic attack after cast is nerfed a bit but you get a swain titanic force will rarely appear as a first augment option this one was the one where if you have a lot of health over like 1400 i believe you deal two percent of your max health as auto attack damage uh, Celestial Blessing Omnivamp got buffed a bit. Cybernetics 3 got a bit of a buff as well. Enforcer Soul has been removed. I was very curious about this one. I actually thought it was like pretty decent theoretically because in the late game having 4 Enforcers is really good. But compared to the other Prismatic traits, which is what you should compare it to, it is a little lacking. Um, high End Shopping will now also grant 5 gold. High End Shopping will never appear as the first augment. And then Makeshift Armor... 3 is now being buffed a tiny bit. It's funny how they removed this as a first augment. It was really awkward because you couldn't really get 2 star 1 cost units when you got this. Well, you still could, but it just made it more difficult. Uh, Socialite Soul now also grants 8 gold, and then Weak Spot, you can no longer be offered other levels of Weak Spot after choosing any tier of Weak Spot. Woodland Charm will never appear as a third augment, and then Share the Spotlight is being changed from tier 2 to tier 3, but they are getting a buff. That is a very welcome change because Socialites completely took over last set. Pretty unexpected in my opinion as well. Uh, Share the Spotlight now also grants a Senna. So now moving on to the traits, we are going to start off with Bruisers. Bruisers health is being increased a little bit. Challenger attack speed being nerfed early but buffed later. Chemtech, we have the same thing going on where they're being nerfed a little in the middle but buffed at like Super Chemtech. And then the max health for the Chemtechs are now being buffed across the board. Clockwork base attack speed being buffed at uh, 4 and 6 clockwork, Enforcer Stun Duration being reduced a bit, Colossus now also gets an innate bonus of 1000 health, and then this should help fix the problems where your Cho'Gath is like complete paper until you 2 star him. Uh, Cho'Gath's base health is also being nerfed by 600 to compensate for this, and then Galio, same thing. Next up we have the Innovator, so the Bear's getting health nerfed, Dragon's getting health nerfed, and the Fear Duration's getting nerfed as well and the critical strike bonus damage. So lots of innovator nerfs here, which is pretty interesting to me. Uh, mutant new seven piece chase trait has been added for each variation. So that was another thing on my wish list: more chase traits. And I specifically pointed out mutants as well. Glad they are adding that into the game too, because I mean like there are way too many mutants. So if you get one augment for it or one spatula item for it, which are both pretty easy to get. It made it very easy to get to like seven mutants, even though you only wanted to run five of them before, but they fixed that now. And then here is like what they give afterwards. Scrap is now smarter. Units like Ezreal and Aurelia will no longer roll Hextech Gunblade or Morella Namicon. That is good. Socialite is now a one, two, three, five trait. And then they are changing it a little bit. Bonus damage being nerfed at one Socialite. And then at five Socialite, all bonuses are doubled. Holy cow. That would actually be pretty neat because like, yeah, it makes sense to have like a super socialite trait because they added so many other socialites. I believe like Nar and Senna are the new socialites. Twin Shot is now a 2, 3, 4, 5 trait. And then these two are like the ways they scale with the new trait structure. Before I believe it was 2, 4, 6, but now it's 2, 3, 4, 5. Twin Shot tooltip now specifies that it works with ability cast as well. Yeah, it always did that um, in case people were curious about it. So now onto the units. Pretty important change. They removed Protector, so Kastanin is now a Mutant and a Scholar. Um, I'm not going to go over the number changes because these are pretty irrelevant because they change things a lot on the PvE. But onto the Tier 2 units, Blitzcrank is now a Scrap Bodyguard because no more Protectors again. And then Swain is now Hextech Arcanist because they removed 
Imperial, so he is now Hextech instead. And then Talon is now a Debonair Assassin instead of an Imperial Assassin. Then for Talon's VIP bonus, we have Blade's Edge Bleed that now deals true damage and lasts 100% longer. I feel like reroll Talon in the Imperial version was much stronger than the Debonair one, uh, but we'll have to see because like the official game has not been out yet and unlike the public beta environment, um, we haven't had too much time to play around with all the builds quite yet. So now onto tier three units. Trogeth these damage being adjusted, Echo is now a Scrap Assassin Innovator, which is interesting because his tankiness is going up, but his damage is going down. I feel like these are a lot of traits to have on such a good unit. Gangplank got a slight buff, Leona's now a Debonair Bodyguard, so her VIP bonus is that she heals for 0.8 maximum health every second for each unit targeting her. So stuff like Gargoyle Stoneplate would be really cool on Leona with the VIP bonus, because she'll get a lot of tanky stats from that, and she'll heal for every unit targeting her. Malzahar's getting a slight damage nerf, uh, Vex personal space is being buffed a little bit, and then, yeah, magic resist being buffed, and now for Zax, his yoink thing, now Zack takes 75 reduced damage while casting his ability, and the yoink damage is being nerfed a little bit, which, yeah, I don't know why Zack was doing this much damage to begin with, uh, because at one cast, at like one star Zack, he'd often like lead the DPS charts in like stage 3, which was kind of funny to me for a tank unit. Now onto tier 4 units, Braum, stun duration being reduced uh, at 1 and 2 star, and then Orianna, she is going to get a damage nerf, but the shielding's going to increase a tiny bit. Interesting, so they do want to go all in on more like the supportish Orianna instead of the damage one. Uh, Seraphine Encore damage is being nerfed across the board, and the attack speed bonus is being nerfed at 2 star. Uh, Vi is now a 4 cost champion, no longer a 2 star, and she is now going to have Piltover Pulverizer. Essentially, she is going to be like a melee caster, and I found that like blue buff is actually pretty funny on her so far. And her new traits are Rival, Enforcer, and Bruiser, and this is essentially replacing the sister trait, which is what she had before. Now on to tier 5 units. So they are nerfing the Colossal Entrance damage and also nerfing the stun duration. However, they are giving it a new source of damage, which is now 5% of his max health as damage. So if you build like Warmogs on Galio, you could get some funny effects. Um, so he makes more sense as a tank carry rather than an attack damage carry, which is what people were doing on him before. Jinx is armored being buffed a little bit, damage being buffed as well. Jinx always felt pretty useless because... She would jump into the fight and then die. Uh, but she might be better now because you don't need to run Vi with her. So she's actually better, not just because of the buffs here, but because of her traits as well. You now get the sister buff automatically instead of needing to wait for it. Um, after Jinx casts of Super Mega Death Rocket, she will now auto attack random valid targets with each attack. She's crazy. Uh, okay. Not really too sure what that meant, but when feeding Tom Kench, a mini progress bar appears that helps you understand how long to hold. Alright, so I guess no more feeding like a real unit to your Tom Kench and no more like missing feeds as well. Uh, now onto the items. Uh, GA got removed. This was like one of the most built items ever, I would say, because it has been relevant in pretty much every single set. And yeah, no longer a thing. They're replacing it with an item called Edge of Night. And pretty much Edgelord of Night, it gives you, it fills kind of a similar role. It's like a defensive item built from sword. And essentially what it does is when the holder drops below 50% health, they briefly enter stealth, becoming untargetable and shedding negative effects. Coming out of stealth, they gain 40% bonus attack speed. So Guardian Angel was primarily used as either a casting cheese item. So a lot of units, they had like a specific cast that they do with the long animation. And then you build Guardian Angel on them to kind of guarantee that cast. The second use of Guardian Angel was as a defensive item for an attack damage carry. And this is essentially what it's going to be from now on because it gives bonus attack speed, it gives attack damage from the stats, and it essentially drops aggro for you. So if you have like a Jin in the back line and you get jumped on by an assassin, if they deal a lot of damage to your like attack damage carry in the back and they drop below 50% health, they de-aggro the assassin's attack like someone else now, and then hopefully with the bonus attack speed, they go ham and kind of carry your team with that uh, little buff. But it is also a unique item, meaning you can only equip one per unit, which makes sense. And then they added a new item for the Radiant version, Brink of Dawn, grants 55% bonus attack speed after coming out of stealth, 
and it also triggers a second time upon dropping to 25% health. So pretty interesting changes there. Uh, if you guys have played on the PBE server, let me know down in the comments below what your favorite comps were. But essentially, like the graphic Riot made is a pretty good summary of a lot of the new stuff. I made a video on this before if you want to check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. But overall, this is one of the biggest mid sets they've ever had. Uh, actually, no, it might be the biggest because normally they only change like one or two traits, but they changed like, I'd say like a third of the set this time. Not to mention all the new augments that are coming in. Again, if you want to get briefed on that, check out the other video I made like a couple weeks ago or head on over to my website bunnymuffins.lol slash set 6-5. Uh, for more info for all that stuff. My plan for this set is of course to do the best comps every single Friday and come out with more gameplay to help you guys climb and I'm also going to try to do more of those like three hour compilation videos um, because people definitely did seem to enjoy those and I haven't done those in a while so hopefully we get new stuff on that um, but that's going to be it from me today. I will see you all later.